If you're aiming for a great nine in GCSE science, then practicals are a big part of this because they take up 15% of your grade, whether it's cross biology, chemistry, physics, mind or separate, 15% is going to be based on the practicals. Now, we know from the exam boards that just learning the methods that you've done in class is not going to be enough to get you those top grades. The exam boards have said this right from the beginning. But every single year in our predictive papers, we take the practical that you've done in class, we think about how it could be tweaked, how it could be changed a little bit, and all of you come back to me and go, right, you've done this wrong, this isn't the practical. So last year when I predicted both synthesis practical correctly, and then I correctly worked out that they were going to change the colour of the light, I had loads and loads of criticism beforehand, but it was just a teeny tiny little change that I'd made to the practical that the same one was made in the real exam. Um, tiny little change, and you need to be able to cope with these tiny little changes, expect those tiny little changes so that when you go into a practical and when you go into the exam, you can see a practical that you're kind of familiar with, but it's not 100%. This was all the same right back in the beginning when they did the osmosis practical with carrots instead of potatoes that they'd written in the practical instructions. So, first of all, you need to be expecting something different. You need to understand the why for every single step that you've done in your practical. So why did you put the palm weed upside down so the bubbles don't get trapped? Why did you put oil in that hole there? Because it's a better conductor. So what I want you to do is to get the practical instructions and go through every single step and say, why did we do this? What sources of error are there in this? And I'm gonna tell you, human error is generally not a very good answer for this question. It's gonna be something like a zero error on the scales where they weren't at zero at the beginning, or when you measure something and the minute you didn't measure from the bottom of the meniscus, or something like that, or not drying things before you weighed them. Human error is generally not a good answer for this question. The other thing I want you to do when you're looking at the practical instructions is think, how can this be improved? Or what can we do to make this better? A good answer for this is generally using a data logger. So instead of taking manual readings every like five minutes from a thermometer, you can hook it up to a data logger, which is hooked up to the computer, which will automatically take readings every second if you want it to. So you get more um, accurate data, you get more reliable data, and it will also plot the graph for you in real time, some of them will. So that's a really, really good way to improve your um, practicals in class. You need to be familiar with all the maths that goes into practicals. So any graphs that you draw, at least be able to recognise the shape of the graph that you would be expecting. So if you see something similar or something different in the exam, you can go, oh, that's that, or oh, that's changed because of this. I wonder what's going to happen to make it change. But the most important thing when you're aiming for grade nine in relationship to your practicals is to not expect it to be exactly the same in the exam because it won't be. Ouch! This is why in some videos I don't explain scratches.